Hey there garden friends, welcome once again to my garden. I'm here at my school's orchard, a uh, beautiful orchard here. I've got a mixture of, you can see evergreen citrus behind me that are doing pretty good and need some harvesting. And I've got a lot of deciduous fruit trees that have now gone dormant. We've got uh, peaches, nectarines, plums, apricots, pluots, apriums, uh, a lot of different varieties. And so right now in the winter time is a perfect time to get in there and do some pruning. And so I figure why not a uh, better time now than to Help, uh, help us all learn together how to prune a little bit. So some of the basics on pruning your fruit trees is you're gonna wanna uh, have a few tools, to protect your eyeballs at all times. Uh, a little handsaw like this. Ooh, let me see if I can open it up. These ones work fantastic, right? It's really simple to use, pretty affordable to buy. It doesn't require a lot of uh, gasoline or anything to, to, to run it or a battery. It just works off you. If, if you got the strength to do it, these ones work fantastic. Uh, obviously a nice strong clean sharp lopper for some of those larger limbs um, that are um, that you need to cut on and of course your handy dandy pruners hand pruners these ones are uh, capable of cutting up to an inch or so um, keep them razor sharp right keep them clean from from tree to tree you always want to clean them and uh, get them sanitized a little bit so that way you're not transmitting disease from from tree to tree if, if you can that's the best practice some of the things you want to remember when pruning your fruit tree, and I'll probably show you some examples of this as we go through the orchard here, is that you're really just trying to remove uh, dying branches, diseased branches, dilapidated branches, uh, destroyed branches, and dead branches, right? Usually I, for the students, I just like uh, disease, dying, or dead. So you, if you see a branch and it's not doing well, and it's under one of those Ds, uh, get rid of it completely. So uh, we'll go around and I'll show you there's over the course of the summer some branches didn't do well and some things happened to them and you'll see dead areas of branch on the tree. Uh, and so you want to get those completely removed. Uh, if you see one that's not completely dead but it looks like it's been just been through too much and it's just you got to make the hard decision and just and just get rid of some of those limbs. Um, sometimes they're smaller, other times it might be a larger limb that's in distress. If, um, if you can't save it reasonably, get rid of it, you know. If you get a nice clean cut, it'll heal. You'll get some fresh growth. Believe me, uh, it's, it's worth the effort. Um, also, branches that are like crisscrossing each other or touching each other, you gotta, you gotta pick one or take it, rid of both of them. You don't want your, your tree, uh, branches rubbing on each other because that's just gonna create open wounds, areas for infection and whatnot. So you don't want that. Uh, some branches that are touching the ground, this happens a lot with the citrus, especially when they get heavy with fruit, but some of these trees do it as well, uh, the, the deciduous trees. But, uh, you don't want any branches touching the ground. When the branch is touching the ground, that's just one more avenue for bugs and insects to, to get into your tree. And it's kind of closing off the air circulation around your tree. What you want for your fruit trees when you're thinking about pruning is keep in mind, you always want good air circulation and good sunlight penetration. And so you want open centers, right? And you want outward, upward growth. And if you start seeing limbs that are just getting completely far out there and too long, uh, and that happens, I'll show you some uh, right now. Uh, you want to either remove them or prune them back to where they're gonna, they, have, they can have some healthy upward growth because we want kind of outward upward growth outward upward and so that's that's the kind of uh, the growth pattern we're trying to create some of these trees uh, do it more naturally than others and you'll notice some some of the trees that they, they really want to run vertically so you have to kind of train them to kind of force that growth outwards and you can do that with your pruning and uh, and your tree care it's actually not too difficult to do and I'll show you here in a little bit um, so here we go protect your eyes little handsaw, nice loppers, pruners. Let's do it. I'm gonna go show you a few examples of some things we can cut. All right, so I'm hidden back here, but this is a really, the limbs kind of closest to you are a really good example of limbs that are, uh, they're dead. They're, they were diseased, they were dying, now they're dead, and they don't need to be there. This tree's doing okay. It's coming back a little bit with a lot of new growth, but it, it's competing with all the all these old dead growth that's in the way. Some of it is small enough for me to prune with my hand pruners, but you know what, some of it is also large enough for me just to get in there and just saw it out and get some fresh cuts in there. I'm gonna meet it back to where that dead branch meets healthy branch uh, and I'm gonna get rid of it in, in, uh, entirely. And that'll make space for all this new growth to kind of flourish. You actually see there's a dead branch right here. Even this one right here is actually done. And this one right near, near me is done as well. All three of them are toast. But th this branch right here is, is doing fine. So it, what we can do is cut it back as far as we can go Hopefully we can get some fresh growth on this tree, but this is a good example. So if you see limbs that are dead, and the reason why I know it that's dead is its bark is all shriveled up. It's got sap oozing out of it. Um, all the branches around this tree, around these limbs, are look healthy and have you know fresh growth buds on them and have, have color. And so these ones are all gray and pale and decaying and 
all just not looking good if you if you kind of pull a little branch off or cut a little bit there's no living tissue underneath it boom that's <laughs> if all those things don't tell you that it's dead that's like i don't know what to tell you but uh those are the clues and so uh if you have a limb that looks like that at home get those cut and removed right and then like i said once you cut those off go clean your blade um, because it's probably time to clean it a little bit and i'll, I'll go I'll look around this this tree right here probably has several more dead limbs to go as do my other trees sometimes you go through a whole tree you might just have one little nub on there sometimes you go there they might have you know a little section that just didn't do well um, and it's time to get get rid of that best you can and if, you know honestly if, if you have so much of your tree is not looking great to a certain point uh, you've got to prune that tree to nothing and then maybe start fresh but we'll go into that later One of my first examples of limbs you want to prune off your tree and to be aware of are ones that crisscross the center of your tree. Like I said before, healthy fruit tree is going to have an open center, an outward upward growth. And when you have these branches crisscrossing the center uh, in different directions or in any direction, that's not good because you're choking off that airflow and it gets away from the whole goal of having that open center. So right here behind me, you can see these ones right here. And those ones are starting to reach back towards the sunlight. Um, the sunshine from us, the su southern exposure right here, uh, is to your right my left um, and it's it goes this way and so that so you'll notice your fruit trees um, are all going to always want to stretch unless you live in uh, near the equator or something um, they're always going to stretch towards the sunlight and you'll you'll notice that and so sometimes that can be a good thing other times you kind of have to uh, manage uh, the trees desire to stretch towards the Sun so right here I'm actually gonna get in here and just uh, prune out these limbs and I'll show you what that looks like this limb right here is probably about as big as I can go with these let's see if it's strong enough for these Oh man. Oh yeah. Okay. You'll notice that that was a pretty thick limb, but what I made sure not to do is I, I, I didn't like t use this as a lever. You don't want to pull back on your branches because then you'll just start tearing away at the bark. Uh, it doesn't matter so much on this side, but if you leave behind a nice, you know, a, a ripping wound, imagine like that on your elbow or something. That's not going to heal very well. So your tree doesn't like that. So it's always important when you're pruning um, just to manage your cuts. This is about as thick as I would ever go with these. And actually that probably took too much effort. I, I would either probably just go back to uh, my loppers on that. I actually have a little bit smaller pair of loppers I might use for something like that. But um, you definitely don't want to uh, pry on your branches. So nice clean cuts, get rid of all that center crisscross growth. On to the next problem. All right, now this kind of damage here is common in the garden, especially your, your home orchard. You get a, uh, limbs that get so heavy with fruit. When you're not around, they, they kind of bend down. If you don't get to that fruit in time to harvest it, like it happens here, they, they will break. Sometimes you can repair the branch like we've done before on some larger limbs and they, they have worked. But uh, this one is kind of smaller. I can see that the limb's pretty much destroyed and it's, and it's been this way for so long that I'm actually just gonna get in here and remove this completely. And because it's on such a small little nub right here, I'm probably just gonna take it back to where it meets this branch right here and get a nice clean cut in there. Now it's pr I, could, I could probably like wrench on it with this a little bit, but that's that's not going to be ideal. Um, I could probably use my loppers, uh, and that would be probably cool too. But you know what? I haven't used this. This is a brand new one for me. I've used this tool before, but not this specific tool. So let's see if how, how well it cuts. Woo! Okay, so I kind of like this because the loppers, you know, they they cut good, but sometimes you know it takes a little bit of effort. You know that. You know, this is kind of a different kind of effort. I might, I might like this, so let's see. But, but you can see it's a nice clean cut. You don't necessarily need to go out and get the, uh, the black paint and the pruner sealer. Because um, I hear kind of mixed things on that. And so as long as you're making nice clean cuts uh, with a clean blade, you don't need to worry about that. The tree has a natural way of healing itself. Uh, save your money on other fun th things for your garden. Um, buy more seeds or fertilizer or whatever but, uh, and tools. But uh, instead of that but uh, this works really well and so hopefully on to the next problem okay now this happens a lot to a lot of folks in their uh, fruit trees especially citrus uh, but as well as uh, your deciduous fruit trees like this you get sucker growth through all these all this lower branching that's shooting up uh, right out of the, uh, the bottom here sometimes you'll see it comes right below the the root ball there or right I'm sorry below, below the graft point and so this is where actually your hand pruners are gonna shine you can get in here and just get nice and clean cuts right right close to the trunk without cutting into the trunk if you get any suckers that are too big like right here at the bottom here I'll probably use the lopper on that or or the or the uh, actually I'll probably use that handsaw now because it's working so dang good but 
We want to get these out of here because they're really, as you can see, it's just growing up through the center of this tree too. Here, actually, here's a couple more you can see that are growing up through the center here that I just don't want. I want the center to be open so airflow and light can penetrate through because what happens is, is that then you get less mold, less bugs, less problems, uh, more fruit. So there you go. Airflow, sunlight, it's a good thing. Uh, so there you go. I'll probably get back in here, like I said, with a, with a bigger saw right here and cut that out on to the next problem. Okay, so here's a really good example of what happens a lot, uh, especially on peach trees. Uh, they start getting these downward facing branches. You see, you don't want any of that going downwards. So we're actually going to probably bring it back here, even redirect that out. Out and up, out and up. There you go. Yep, no, no downward facing branches for us. We don't want that. So I'll go through and cut all of the ones that are going towards the ground. Here's another one right here. You can see these branches right here kind of facing towards the ground. That's not going to end up nice. So I'm going to take it all the way back. Get it right there. Oh, see, here's a good example of um, a dead limb. So you can see it's already kind of shriveled up. Nothing's coming off of it. All of his friends nearby are ready to hang out and have fun. They're thriving, starting to grow a little bit and swell up. So that has got to go. This limb itself might even have to come out as well. Just the entire limb because it's kind of in between two larger limbs taking up some space. It's already kind of heading down towards the ground. So ultimately, instead of doing all those other cuts, I'd probably just get in here and uh, look at this. And this, yeah, this one's crisscrossing through, through the canopy, right? Right past another dead branch. So that dead branch is gonna go. This crisscrossing branch is gonna go. And actually, even this, this one right here is probably gonna go as well. Because it's just not in, it's not in a suitable spot. It's kind of competing with two healthier branches and kind of taking up the space in between them. So I don't want that. Nice clean cut. Like I said, I, you don't want to tear and mess with it because you're just going to get a, get a bad cut and then uh, you don't want that. You don't want a bad open, ripped up wound. Nice clean cuts. But now, you can see this area is, see how that's a little more open right in there in between these two bigger limbs? That's what you want for all around your tree. All right? Good healthy growth and uh, a little bit of openness. The tricky thing here, I got a branch here that got bent over, stretched out. I got really small, a tight space in the orchard here. This tree is getting filled out. It's a pluot tree. It's actually three different varieties of pluot and they're all delicious. And so we really like taking care of this tree because it puts off some really good fruit. So much fruit this year that it weighed down this branch right here uh, and it was stressing it and it just laid down and now it's stretching for the sunlight. Problem is, is it's in a pretty tight little spot right here in, in between these two main branches. So what I'm thinking is I, I started pruning it back to save it. But then when I realized, you know, it might just be better just to get, just to cut this one back, clean air, open this area up and then let uh, these other larger branches take over and fill the space in because it's a really uh, dense tree already. Um, and so it might be healthy just to, just for me to remove this, this limb, even though it's a bummer. Sometimes people, you know, you, you get sad. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna lose that limb. You can see this one's hurting. It's, it's laying down. It's actually going almost towards the ground and that's not good. I could prune it up and then let it grow back a little bit, but I almost don't even want a branch this low on this tree. So that's something to consider at your, uh, your, your home or your project is, where do you want that canopy to start? So for me, I want it to be a little bit higher than this. And so this limb is gonna go. So I'm just gonna, look at this is the no look. Mm, no, I looked, I looked, I looked. But really, clean blade, clean cut, and I'm not putting too much pressure on it because I don't want to push on this and tear on that bark because you don't really, you don't want to get that, that, that tear or that, that bark tears down the side. You get a nice, clean cut, no tear. Smaller wound, less bugs and infection, faster heal rate. And now I'm actually, I, now that I see it, I'm actually really happy that I did because now this area is open. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you how to, how to train your fruit trees to be, not be so dang tall. And it's really easy. We're just going to find the limbs we want that are getting too tall and we're going to top them and do some topping prunes, some topping cuts, where we cut them, lower them, and then redirect that growth outwards, the direction we want. So we're going to look for an outward facing bud. We're going to bring those limbs down, give them a nice slight angled clean cut away from that bud, and then they'll be happy, they'll heal, they'll regrow, and then that growth will go out and up the, the way you um, have pruned it. So let's go see if we can find a few uh, limbs 
and do an example of that. All right, so for my next micro lesson, it's it's to control that vertical growth. You can see these two trees behind me. I got, uh, what is it, aprium right here, and then uh, cherries, three in one cherry tree right here. They both kind of have a, a tendency to want to shoot up their new branches vertically, uh, which is great when you kind of want to go upwards, but sometimes you don't want your fruit tree to always have upward branches. You need to kind of go up and out, up and out, or out and up. And so what we're gonna do is you want to find these upward branches that are going in directions that you don't want them to go. Once they get to a certain point, you wanna find a healthy spot, lower that branch down quite a bit, and then look for an outward facing bud that seems suitable to you. And then you prune that off. You wanna look for a bud that's gonna face a direction that's gonna open up to a new spot uh, with, that they can fill up, uh, that they won't be competing with other branches, but that's really it. You wanna bring down that vertical growth, look for an outward facing bud, give it a nice clean, uh, slight angled cut that, that is angled away from that growth bud. You don't want to angle it towards your bud because then you know water is going to collect there and, and it'll decay or it could, uh, it could kill your bud. So you slight clean angle away from your bud uh, and then like I said you can direct it to where you want to go. It, uh, not not too unlike printing roses in a way once you see that little, this is almost even easier I would say because it's so much more visible the growth buds on here. So when you're at home pruning your fruit trees don't don't be afraid to make a cut right uh, some people oh, i don't want to cut anything off if you see a branch that's dead diseased dying damaged get rid of it if you see one touching the ground or almost touching the ground get rid of it if you see one crisscrossing the center and getting your you know, the center of your tree really uh you know clustered up with branches and, and cut off you don't want that you want an open center right so get rid of those if you got branches that are just screeching towards the sky and they're and they're just going nothing but, but straight up you want to do what I'm doing right here. You want to cut those back and then direct that growth outwards so you have nice outward, upward growth. Uh, so here's one more cool tool that I didn't show you in the beginning of this video. This is actually uh, like a pole saw, a little pole lopper actually. Uh, and so that you can go up and extend your reach a little bit high up in the canopy and then you can use this to slide down and snap that. Basically it's a, it's a lopper on a pole and it just kind of gives you some, some extra reach. And so, especially in the home garden when you don't want to be climbing on top of ladders if you don't have to, or especially out here in the school, we don't really want all that for our students. We try to keep our trees nice and stout. Uh, and so to do that, we have to actually get up in there and prune it a bit in places that are hard to reach. This tool does great. And there's a, this tree right behind me is a pear. It's actually, I think it was a 20th century pear, an Asian pear, D uh, delicious. It's almost like an apple and a pear had a baby and it's really awesome. It's just, it's not, not really gritty like typical pears. It's really juicy, uh, it's sweet and juicy like a, like a pear, sweet like an apple. An awesome tree and actually I think last season we've actually even um, grafted a few different varieties onto this tree and we'll probably do it again this season. Get a few more varieties of pear onto this one tree. I think now we got like three types of pear on this one tree. And so this tool right here is gonna be great for this one because compared to some of the other peaches and nectarines I have in this orchard, this tree really has a tendency to shoot its branches and all its new growth uh, straight up to the sky, vertical. Um, I'll get a picture and image of it and hopefully show you because you can see it. So I'll do some before and after. So this tool right here is actually gonna be really good for pruning this one because a lot of those branches are a little bit higher than my, uh, my reach is with the loppers. Um, and some of them I can reach, but this just makes it so much easier. So let's, let's give it a shot. So here's a great example of a tree that is definitely in need of a pruning, but it's, it's had several years of pruning training already. So it's got a nice structure to it, open center. This is a big old pluot tree, but you can see a lot of its branches that just went nuts this summer. And so it got pretty elongated. Let me see if I can get a different angle. And so you can see some of them too are kind of going out horizontal a little bit too far. So you can see this one right here in front of us is kind of stretching, look how far it keeps going, 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 and then now it's going stretching towards the sunshine. So we're gonna bring a lot of this growth back, clean it up. Like I said, look for disease, dying, dead branches, branches that are crisscrossing the center. Like you can see some right there, the, in the center there going whoo. Those are going back towards the center. We don't want that. We want a nice open center uh, where air and sunlight can penetrate through. We want room for our branches to develop and, and provide fruit. And so a lot of this is just a little bit too, too bushy and a little bit too elongated on a lot of these branches. Some of them are going vertical for quite some ways. Look at that, woo! And so we're gonna get in there and give this one a really good trim. And so I think this will be a great example of, of uh, basically how to, how to prune your trees, especially one that's been around for a few years. This one's probably been in our soil, I don't know, eight, nine years here I've had it. So now you can see the pretty much big difference 
that a bit of pruning makes. You can see all that excess growth that was way up there is now gone, trimmed up, redirected growth. All the dead, disease dying branches are out of there. The center of that tree is now opened up a bit. Yeah, none of it is sweeping down towards the ground. Notice there's no suckers on the ground. Uh, really good little network for a canopy here. I probably have to go through one more time and to give it a once over and that usually happens. You'll probably find that at home where you'll prune your tree a little bit and then you'll kind of leave it for a while, come back and then later you'll notice some branches or some things that you, you might still want to prune on. It doesn't mean you gotta you know, go crazy and whack the thing to the ground and leave nothing behind. But oftentimes, you know, a little bit of patience little time you come back you might you might notice something you missed before and that might be true for you too but yeah this turned out great on to the next so to conclude some of the first thing you want to do when pruning your fruit trees here in the, uh, in the late fall winter even early spring are to remove any disease dying dead branches get those out of there completely with uh, using clean pruners uh, you want to also any branches that are touching each other you don't want them rubbing against each other right so we want to get rid of those or at least one of them the, the, you want to keep the one that's best uh, you also want to direct the growth with your pruning, looking for the buds that are that are swelling up to, to go the direction that you want that branch to go in the future. It's also important to uh, remove any branches that have angles that really aren't conducive to healthy growth, like branches that are going straight down towards the ground or even touching the ground. You want to remove those entirely. Uh, branches that are shooting straight vertically and going vertical for too long, you want to make sure you, you prune those back to some outward facing buds to produce some more lateral growth. Really, you're gonna, you're gonna learn best by doing so you can you can watch my video again you can you can learn with me ask questions and comments uh provide those but really your, your best way to learn is just to get out there uh and try your best and, and take what you've learned here and then go go research elsewhere also and learn as much as you can but really the best way to learn is just to go do it yourself so here's to you here's to your garden happy gardening best wishes hope to see you again